I've been wanting to do a video now for quite a while on friction welding. Uh, you've probably seen the other videos uh, on friction welding, and I think they're really interesting. If you're not familiar with the term, what it is is, uh, uh, unlike other forms of welding where you might use a flame or electrical resistance, with friction welding what they do is they'll take two pieces, it's more suited for round uh, pieces, and they'll take two pieces like this and they'll spin them opposite directions of one another at high speed, or they'll just hold one stationary and spin one at high speed until the uh, point of contact gets so hot from friction that it melts. At that point they shut off the lathe almost instantly and allow the part to cool. Now being I have an uh, ordinary metalworking lathe here, I can't shut off the lathe instantly, but I can shut it off relatively quickly and hopefully uh, that doesn't affect the weld between the two. Now the 13 inch lathe probably isn't the uh, best setup, the most rigid setup for something like this. I have another lathe that's a lot bigger, but at the speeds I'm running, uh, that lathe is, would be kind of terrifying. So I am just going to use this one. I'm gonna set this up here. And I'm going to take this up to 2000 RPM. Okay, well, uh, that welded, I don't know how strong it is, not very strong. Okay, that, <clears throat> that first attempt, uh, I mean, it did bond a little bit, but it wasn't strong at all. I really can't stop this lathe uh, real quick. I'm going to try a lower speed and a more rigid setup. I'm going to actually mount uh, this other piece in the tool holder here. Hopefully I won't get the uh, chattering that I got last time, so let's try that. The tricky part is going to be lining this thing up. I'm also going to run a lower speed in the chuck so I can shut the chuck off faster. Okay, I've indicated in that part now. And uh, so now I just need to line it up with the part in the chuck. That's going to be the tricky part. Uh, one of the tricky parts, I think. I don't have to get it perfect. But, looks pretty good right there. That'll work. Now I'm going to turn the speed down to about 1000 RPM. I had it 2000 RPM before. Okay, let's give it a shot again. Okay, that's not getting hot. It's getting hot, but not hot enough. So I'm going to turn it back up to what it was.
I was able to put more pressure on it this way than using the drill chuck. It's more stable. Let's loosen this up. Yeah, that got really hot really quick. And it's not moving. Now it finally came off. Let's try that again. You can see where it actually melted uh, and pushed into the interior. The one thing I didn't do is after I welded it, uh, I didn't put more pressure after it was stopped to help fuse it together. So I'm going to give this another try. Just going to trim this up and turn it around. This time I'm going to put a counter bore in the, in the uh, end of the rod of the tube to give it a, a thinner cross section. I misstated before, this is not 4140, this is actually uh, 4130. It's still chrome molly, but um, just a little bit lower carbon. 4130 means it's 0.3% uh, carbon instead of 0.4% like with 4140, but uh, it's still a high carbon alloy, but it's just easier to weld, and that's good when it comes to building uh, airframes. Uh, they use this, or they, at least they used to use it quite a bit. We're building fuselages and stuff like that. I'm going to line that up by eye again. Just now, I can't account for backlash on here. It might move a little bit, but that'll work right there, I think. Okay, let's uh, try this again at 2,000 RPM, like I'd originally tried. I fed the material in pretty good. It's still off, but considering the setup, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's welded on there pretty good, guys. I'm just gonna trim this off real quick here. not bad back here because of the heat sink back into the chuck but uh, there it is that is friction welded there's no voids or anything in it that's kind of cool now I'm going to take a half inch carbide end mill and do a cutaway view of the inside of this weld All right, here's the cutaway view of the same tube. I cut away half the diameter to give you a clear view of the weld on the inside. Uh, you can see where the material rolled and displaced on the inside just like it did the outside. So and that's what it looks like. And of course, you see where I pocketed it with the uh, 3 8 drill and then the original bore of a quarter inch. It seems like a pretty substantial weld. Um, uh, it, it withstood the cutting pressure with that end mill 
just fine. And being this is a heat affected zone right around the weld area, uh, and this is a heat treatable steel, it got pretty hard here in the middle. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe lower 50s rock weld being this is 4130. Uh, you can see where it's a little bit shinier there in the middle and that's also an indication that the um, material heat treated and hardened. So anyway I hope you guys find that interesting and um, I can see all you guys now with engine lays going out running out to your shop at midnight and trying this. So Anyway, I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys this. All right, uh, give it a thumbs up if you would please, and subscribe to my channel. And I will be seeing you next video.